today is my last day. I am leaving Morocco and I'm flying uh, to South America. Today and tomorrow I'm going to take like one, two, three, four, five flights. Okay, there is one thing I kind of want to talk about when it comes to Morocco. Because Moroccans are friendly and helpful most of the time. For example, the very first days I arrived here, I received this very cute gift from the local agency. It's a typical tagine full of sweets. I mean, what happened was that they confused things a little bit. So as an apology, they send me this tagine. I never expect anything, we all make mistakes, but this was a very nice um, gesture. Then I met people on the Sahara. We went to this uh, nomadic village to see how people uh, live there. <laughs> Abdul and Abdul, why do you like the Sahara? I like in the Sahara because here it's it's calm, it's uh, no big people, it's a very nice place. All the people is coming here for the holidays. Then also our bus driver he took me from Rabat to Casablanca and he took me to have lunch with uh, his family. I have no pictures or videos of that because I thought that was inappropriate to just like pull out my phone and start taking pictures but i got to meet the whole family and that was an incredible experience and later on the family of uh, this bus driver uh, the wife she just sent me like a full jar of uh, honey like people here do stuff without expecting anything in return on many places they just give you tea or cookies or invite you to a wedding. So this is the beautiful part of the country. Then on the other hand, all the scams which are happening in Morocco. And I feel like on some places the mass tourism made things even worse. Now this is another level and I never experienced it uh, this much anywhere else. I understand that they are trying to take advantage, but I mean stuff like uh, giving you fake banknotes on official exchange places or selling fake fossils or just in general the overcharging, it's crazy. Now with these fake banknotes, sometimes what might happen is that let's say that they come out with a $20 banknote which is fake and uh, they ask you to exchange that for their local currency on a fair exchange rate okay so you just really need to watch out but also what happened that you come to a legit official exchange place and you just want to exchange uh, money like let's say you want to exchange uh, dollars or euros for their local currency or after the trip you just want to exchange their local currency back to dollars or euros it happened to me actually i was exchanging a larger amount of their currency back to euros it was about 500 euros so before going to morocco i actually knew about uh, these things that they they are happening in the country so when the guy gave me the 500 euros um, I checked the bills and I found this fake 100 uh, euro bill, right? So I just returned him the bill. But I feel like many people don't check because if you don't know that these things happen, you just don't expect that they are going to give you fake bills, you know, on an official exchange place. I think this is the most serious scam. Um, you can come across in uh, in Morocco. Then many times, especially in bigger cities, people will uh, try to make you feel that you are lost and you are going the wrong way. And they will tell you that they are a local guide and will take you to the right spot. Like literally, this is so random. Let's just say that you are walking um, towards a monument and just randomly someone screams at you like they assume you are going to that certain monument right 
So, and they just scream at you like, uh, like, oh, that thing you are looking for is actually the other way. They just point a different direction. And also many times, especially when uh, you are out alone, people will ask where you are going. And now this is a thing, like you should never tell random people where you are going or which hotel are you staying at. Or also if they see that you are a bit lost, they will tell you that they want to help you. And even if you tell them that you are okay, sometimes they become extremely aggressive. So if they see that you are lost and you tell them that uh, you are okay and you don't need help, but you tell them in a nice way, like most of the time they don't understand. They are going to walk with you and ask you questions. So what I usually did was just I ignored everybody. I never said anything, I just went. And I was just pretending like I know where I go. So many times I just didn't answer these people. And then and then a few times I got yelled at from like random Moroccan strangers that I'm super aggressive and I have no manners. But I still feel like ignoring them is the only way out. And I think these are the ones that made me feel the most uh, uncomfortable. Then uh, the other stuff that might happen that, for example, you get overcharged for uh, henna tattoos or the taxi. The rule is that you need to agree on the price before. You need to know the price before they start drawing any henna on you or you need to know the price before you sit in the taxi. With this henna thing, it's so incredible. You are just walking on the street and a woman comes. She just grabs your hand and starts drawing. And she might even tell you that it's it's a gift, but after she's done, she's gonna charge you a crazy amount of money. In this case, if somebody just grabs your hand, like you need to be aggressive, you just like need to pull your hand and walk away. Also, you have to be careful with uh, taking pictures, especially on markets, like pictures of snakes and uh, monkeys. Also, probably at uh, some point, someone will offer you wheat or hashish and it is illegal so you could get into a big trouble but anyway the rule is just to negotiate anything and everything before uh, taking it or touching it or sitting in it you just need to know the price before uh, by the way, back to the fossils, Morocco has minerals and fossils, but the stuff they sell on the market outside, that's fake. And sometimes tourists, they cannot recognize it, so they pay a lot of money for something that is not real. I would say Morocco in general can be an intense um, experience. I've been to Morocco before, like uh, five or six years ago, so I already kind of knew how things in Morocco work. But overall, I enjoyed the country, but all these things uh, we talked about are just a part of the culture and it's just for information. I arrived to Vienna, but uh, guess who didn't make it to Vienna? My luggage. Anyway, I'm staying at this pretty airport hotel room with like a view directly to the airport. It has a vibe, I like it. Here is the story because this is the day I need to get from Rabat in Morocco to Arequipa in Peru. My flight from Rabat to Paris was late, like an hour and a half, and this is the reason why my luggage didn't make it to the second flight, which was from Paris to Vienna. Now I'm really close to home, right? Because, I mean, Austria is bordering Slovakia. Um, I mean, so close, yet uh, really far away. I arrived to the hotel at like 11.30 in the evening. Now it's after midnight and the flight is at 
6 in the morning. So at 6 in the morning, I'm going to take a flight from Vienna to Amsterdam and from Amsterdam to Lima and from Lima to Arequipa. Here is the bed. Here is the view. That's already the entrance to the airport. You can see Terminal 3. That was the hotel I was staying at and this is just like so comfortable because you literally wake up and in like 30 seconds you are at the airport. 